if you had a criminal conviction and you didn't tell anybody about it and they find out, you can be dismissed from the public service. If you see a pretty little girl in the office or a pretty little fellow that you like, and you talk the fellow like it, dismissed from the public service. The public service rules are more stringent. So why are you coming here to cloud the act that, that is designed to, to tax politicians and put all this extraneous matter in it? Why? Because the politicians don't want hide. Pretend that they're doing something. They may doing nothing. Now let me go on to this thing with the attorney general. I I can no, you know you can it. I found it. It wasn't it was never very clear to me. Um what happened with the the other bill that was being passed and then wasn't passed in the senate no this is no the government didn't put it to the vote in the senate in the senate oh they thought that they, they, they knew that they weren't going to get enough vote so they put it because they had everybody there and then to blame the independent senate for not passing it but they never they never give the independent senate the chance Oh, said, okay. Right? So, 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 so they are lying every time they open their mouth. Never happened. Look. Okay, people, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. No, 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 no. Wait, don't I worry about that part. These, these, these people come into office promising the world. But they only get the world for themselves. They come and trick people, making people believe that they have the answers but they don't have one single answer and they and this, this is this 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 integrity and public life bill is something to give people out there who call themselves the uh, what they call it that there's a, a group called um integrity something other you know? um and they're that, talking, was, that was very active uh, yeah, it was very very active, active they, don't the <laughs> they don't know what the hell they're talking about that's the problem you know they they, they, they don't understand the public service they don't, they don't know the public services. They sit from their high office in public private sector and talk down like they know what they're talking about. And the government, well, they want this to be given. They want this to be No, 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 no. You're taking expert. If you want a lawyer, right? If you want a lawyer, if you've got a legal problem, you've got a lawyer. These people didn't have a clue about the public service or anything else, but they're out there advising. I don't know people sometimes like to feel good that they're talking and people listening to them but let me get to the part with the attorney general you know you know i i, I cannot say it because you know if you say that a turn a, a, a a, a, an attorney at law don't know the law that's defamation so i am not going to say that so i don't so don't go there and quote that I, said, I, I didn't even i didn't even realize that when people say that all the terrible lawyers <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it, 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 is, it can be defamation. So I am not saying that about anybody. However, I want to say about the Attorney General that he going to read law very well. Because I heard him with my own ears saying that the courts in Trinidad said that you couldn't apply the legislation to existing judges. This was not, this, that is not what the court said. The court said the case is Integrity Commission and the Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago. In that decision, the court said that when you change the law to, uh, to include judges under the Integrity Commission in Trinidad, you did it by ordinary legislation. But the judges' terms and conditions were in the Constitution. So if you want to change the judge's terms and conditions, you have to amend the constitution. It never said that you can't you can't do it. So this Lincoln Poop read part of it, or you didn't understand the other part, and come and tell the public about business, oh, we got precedent in Trinidad that you can't put judges, sitting judges before the before um under the integrity commission. Now let me tell you something. What the Constitution provides is that you cannot change a judge's terms and conditions to his detriment. Now, tell me what the detriment a judge will suffer if he has to declare his assets. He can lose salary, they can take away the car. Or what they can do? All the, all the, all, if, if, 
you are actually the permanent secretary and a magistrate. Most magistrates do more work than any judge in Barbados. They see more people, they do more cases than any judge. So, the, so why you put the magistrates under the commission and not the judges? Why you put principals of secondary schools, the chief archivist, they got a whole list of people in the Public Service Act that, that, that are um, under this act. The principal of Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic, um, the manager of markets, director of youth affairs, principal of Erdiston College, you know, um, the list goes on. But after the um, director of disability unit, you can do what you can do, teeth of wheelchair. You know, this is a bunch of foolishness. If they, they, they just come up with these nonsense. Stuff. Because I want to ask you, I want to ask you a couple of questions here. I heard the Attorney General speaking to the fact that Barbados has not established what they call a cam chapter or anti money laundering chapter in Barbados. And some different types of money, anti money laundering legislation was passed. And there was this anti money laundering commission that was set up. And I think the I mean, it's time to be correct here, but I think the Prime Minister's father was the head of some type of anti-corruption, anti-money laundering investigative unit. You're, you're tricking right? me. Right? Honestly, you're tricking I'm me. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean, you, you, you can go and pull it up. <laughs> there was this unit. <laughs> there was this unit set up. And... People were wondering why would you set up another corruption unit when there's a unit set up already? And why would the father of the Prime Minister be the head of this particular investigative unit? And they were touting the fact about former ministers being locked up and investigated and whatever, whatever. And these new anti money laundering laws, <clears throat> which were coming to the country to investigate uh, the traces of money laundering. And like I said, they set up the ACAM chapter and the AG was out there on this anti-money laundering um, campaign, right? <clears throat> so what I'm seeing here is some of those um, legislative ideas where the government is seeking to encompass public servants into the possibility of money laundering. <clears throat> and causing these persons or whatever to declare assets because it is common practice in corrupt governments and corrupt systems where the heads of government and the political arm would use persons in the civil service or whatever to loan the money and out of it. <clears throat> so in their world, it is worthy of having these civil servants or these quote unquote high level civil servants into the loop as to create a intentional line between the legislative arms of government and the other two arms of government. Uh, that's what it's supposed to be. But in Barbados, we know that all three tend to tie in to each other because <laughs> of how close our society is. So it is very easy for a prime minister a collusion with the opposition leader choosing a judge mm -hmm. or the judges based on friendships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is very easy. It is very easy when particular offices have the power to make such powerful decisions on consultation with each other. So this is where the con the parliamentary reform and the constitutional reform could change Barbados and to take away some of the powers of the prime minister to be to be able to perform certain selections, appoint certain officers or whatever in consultation with the office. We don't have an opposition leader, so who did the prime minister consult with to appoint many of the uh, people that she appointed? So I'm saying that the system that we have made the prime minister almost a de facto dictator without a check or balance. And if you have either a weak opposition leader or opposition leader who is in collusion, then you end back up with almost a complete dictator. 
Now, let, let me let me tell you that consultation in, in these times don't mean don't mean nothing. Simply because if the prime minister consults with the leader of opposition and the prime minister and the leader of opposition says I don't agree, the prime minister will tell tell I don't care if you agree or not. President or government, that was the case. Maybe you still about my man. That we had that case with Elliot Belgrave when he when he was proposed to be a judge by the prime minister. The leader of opposition then was Henry Ford. Henry Ford said, "Who oh, not he?" And he said, "Prime minister, said, I want my man." He became a judge and then became governor general. Okay, so don't look, Robert. The next thing I should warn you about is ever listening to Dale Marshall, right? You don't, don't do that. Trust me, it doesn't. It, you, know, you won't learn anything from him. <laughs> certainly, you, know, if, if you, don't, if you just get confused. As I said to you, that's not he has to read the law. But let me go on because I want to talk about this thing here. I can give an example of corruption that nobody is dealing with. We under the, the only court process obviously that you will know about this is because you go, you go, go court every day and you see some new marshals under the last administration they brought in seven persons into the court process office those some, some of those seven persons were related by blood to a particular politician blood relatives it turned out that some of them had criminal records working in courts you know Nobody vetted them because they were sent by a politician. That's corruption. You hear corruption? That is corruption. Now, in this administration, they're bringing a whole set of marshals again. And, you know, the, 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 the thing is that the best suited people for marshals in Barbados now all come from St. Joseph. Apparently, they've got a particular skill, the people in St. Joseph. That makes them back to marshal to anywhere else in Barbados. All right? I'm not accusing anybody of wrongdoing. I'm just telling you that the St. Joseph people are more suited to be court marshals than anybody else. Because all so far in this administration have come from St. Joseph. Now, could they uh, how many are those? How, 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 many, how many court marshals? Well, the, the first one, seven from the last one, and uh, I'm trying to find the, the names of the other ones, but I don't have the to hand, but they brought in a few. And they're all from St. Joseph. So pray tell me. They don't have any I, I can give you a Thomas that will make good marshals. Because I know a few. I born in St. Thomas. I know a kind of roof house that will become good marshals. I would have become a good marshal myself. They never took me to say I was too qualified. So I, I didn't take them on their plate. I, I could I'm too qualified for a job. I can give I you a story I, similar to that, Caswell. Huh? I can give you a story similar to that, Caswell. Happening at the prison. We had a batch of recruits. This was under Wilfred Abrams, the former first minister. We had a batch of recruits going in there doing the training or whatever, whatever, seeking to be accepted. It is being alleged that these this particular grouping or whatever expecting to be included at the last minute, the minister scooped in and pushed those recruits one side Today, saying a batch of his uh, had selected recruits. And those other persons didn't get the job. Those other yeah. persons complained bitterly because they even they told me. Look, you said this to me, Mr. Pepper. You just talk about my thing. I didn't get it there. <laughs> I was even going to tell you one, one young lady whose boyfriend is in prison and she decided, well, today I can't think and she might get, she might get her political strength full. I get a job as a prison officer, but you know what they're doing now? Well, probably not right now. That is <laughs> well, you don't know. You, you, you understand what I'm telling you? Her, she is, her boyfriend is in jail. So, she has political <laughs> friends. And she's missing that loving. So she applied for a prison officer job and get it. But she didn't apply, she asked somebody to get you one, and she get it. And now, it's loving. It becomes a lover's nest. Politicians got and they're talking about corruption. Politicians got to keep out the recruitment of the public service. You brought criminals into the court process office, and now you brought um, horny young women into the prison. Are you making this thing up? Are you making it up? Those, the, 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 you have, you, 
not situations where you with people apply for promotions in the present and the film and there were there were 40 vacancies a lot of people apply and the authorities take only 40 names and tell the, and tell the commission oh we only have 40 applicants we're going to point all and when the other people here people are dropping it they apply by here nothing corruption and i don't know if that was one of the things that was a state secret or that called for national security because that was one of the things that should have been reported on by these people in the prison because i know i know why because i'm the person who drafted in terms of reference but i insisted that this thing done and, and, I, and I, I i drafted the terms of reference and all of my terms of reference came out in the thing i actually know having drafted the terms of reference the boy will show me the report so i don't know what i, I all i know is in my and for what no you can shut it down i tell you this 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 too corrupt and people go on along and, and this and they're, they're merry way i know you have an act to cover over corruption and call it integrity and public life and, and people and, and, and people think it is a big thing that's what i'm telling you sometimes when you hear well intentioned well intentioned idiots walking about the place talking talking about things that they don't understand i had to call one of the people on the film group and tell me i said tell me something you're walking about talking about integrity and public life and you are coming over here, people and treating them bad for them don't know this not kind of thing i did i did that a couple of days ago you know so so um well, a couple weeks ago now so but these people walk about the place and give the impression that they're all knowing and then the politicians you know trying to make people practice that does and listen to them they don't know what they're talking about look if you want to be a lawyer you got to go to Kevin for three years and then you go to your wedding or the other law school for, for two if you want to be a politician you know then the qualifications you have people know who are politicians who can talk about my my department and my staff and some of them are single pitman to the name walking about the place but because you even had a policy yeah they cannot really off remember and he said when he read he says he he's um it is he, he pledges this to the her majesty queen elizabeth and her hairs i said oh you see then <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, whoa whoa <laughs> Internal problem, but people can't read. <laughs> so, what do you expect? So they can be misled by one body who feels that I, I'm a big brother to trick all them, and they're gonna follow me. And even the ones who have education ain't got the guts, or as somebody will tell me, ain't got no no gonads, balls. But then again, <laughs> you know the story behind that. Oh, so when they tell you that Barbados is corrupt and this piece of legislation will do nothing to prevent corruption, it will only give the appearance of Whoa. dealing with corruption. That is all this will do. A lot of fancy people with a lot of jobs. The, my, my argument was you see these things, all these investigating officers and things, you got a you you have a commissioner of police. Who is responsible? Also, mind you, he is the head of the Royal Barbados Police Force. He is responsible for crime in Barbados and for dealing with crime. When you, you don't got to go and put another. But, no, no, no. but, 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 Caswell, but let me ask you, know you touch on that. We now have a minister for crime. But, so. The constitution provides Tradition. that a ministry should have a minister, and if the minister needs assistance, he will give him a parliamentary secretary. The constitution does not provide for two ministers in any ministry. A lot of prime ministers have done it, but it is contrary to the constitution. I can find the section and read it for you. It is, but what happens because you got a man who's the ministry responsible? He's going to get the same pay as a fellow irresponsible because all of them. All of them get the same pay. So, so, but, so, so this last this administration created the post of senior minister. 
senior minister in the Westminster system of government do, is an honorary thing. They don't, they, a senior minister in the ministry don't mean anything. See, the first time we had a senior minister in the Caribbean was George Price from Belize. He was, he was Belize. Well respected by both government and opposition. So when he lost government, the, the, the former opposition who became government appointed him senior minister. And he sat down on the front bench of the opposition. He was not in any cabinet, but that was a position of honor. So he could retain his diplomatic passport and all kind of stuff. You know, because he was a senior minister. And the only other senior ministers we got is in church. But you create a post called senior minister and give them the same pay as deputy prime minister. When Arthur did it first, when he took Billy Miller down, Billy got vexed and complained. And so the one gives you back the same money, call a senior minister and give it a mate, giving it to them the same salary. I know you have a prime minister who is saying that we have senior ministers responsible for supervising ministers. No, the supervisor of a minister is the prime minister. No who's, the, who's that? Who's the supervisor? In the particular minister? case, though, with the crime, with the crime ministry, we have, each senior minister we have has a group attorney. Of no, 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 no. A group, each senior minister has a group of ministers that supervises that group. So, when the prime minister, oh, Galifan, about the place, she ain't got a lot back because she got people doing her job. Her so, how job, many senior ministers we have now? I got about five. Five. Right? Joe, all that five. means is that drawing more money from the treasury than is necessary, that is in accordance with good practice. <laughs> All of cabinet is draw four million dollars a year. But, the salaries of cabinet is four million dollars per year. I hear you say that, but they will continue drawing until the day they die. So when you don't only think about four million dollars, <laughs> think about the two million dollars in pensions from the day they reach fifty. Because what will happen? They will get a majority. They can take the majority. So then instead of getting Two thirds, they will get half of their, their salary. Okay? And half your salary for, the, for as long as you live. But all, of course, there are going to be increases and stuff as the time go along. Right? So, this, this is a smoke and mirrors government. Give right, people the but, pressure. You know, they said many has made light work. They're going to work for a lot of them. Okay, well, I want, I want to bring something to your attention. In Trinidad, we have an attorney general. And we have a Minister of National Security. In Barbados, the Minister of National Security is the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. We have the Attorney General, and then we have a Minister for Crime. So, no, no, how... No. We don't have a Minister for Crime. This, this is essentially so, a Minister for the Portfolio. They say that he's responsible for crime. He's responsible for nothing. A Minister in a Ministry... Other than the substantive minister is responsible for nothing. Don't let the boy fool you. That is to give Corey a job. I see responsible for something. He can't make a decision. He can't sign an order. Like, for instance, let me give you an example I talked about earlier in the week. Severance payments. They changed the severance payment uh, requirements from the COVID period so that people will get um, less money or don't get any money at all. <laughs> And, but they couldn't do it under the existing system. So they created this new system and brought people in to um, adjudicate the cases. And these people adjudicate the case. And when they're finished, the, the national insurance will pay the severance payment due to these people. Now, under the law, if national insurance pays severance pay to um, employees of a former company or our company, that company is responsible for paying back the money and the national insurance will give you over, let you pay back over a period of time. Mm -hmm. We had a situation where I don't know where the Prime Minister was but this, and they had to rush to get this, leg this legislation in place because it had expired. As a matter of fact, it expired and then they brought it back, they, they came back and revived the dead and Ryan Strong Sign the order. Sign the like. Sign these new these new regulations as minister responsible for severance pay. I checked with the clerk of parliament. 
because I didn't hear or see when any time he became minister or was acting minister with small servants. So because but he was in the ministry, he think he could do it. So no, any one of those employers who is faced with a clear for national insurance can tell me, but I I am I am paying back the money because you don't have the authority to, to, to take the money from me because Ryan Shaw was never a minister. I don't know if that was deliberate so that people don't go and pay it back or what. But that is going to be the effect. The employers will say national insurance pays up. I'm not paying national insurance because it was not done under the, the, the normal rules. And under these rules, a person claiming to be minister. I remember years ago when the minister responsible for agriculture was we had took up price control. And they had to change the legislation because the price control order was signed by the wrong minister. So the, the actual prices that you can control, you control the prices, they couldn't take effect because you had the wrong minister. You know who saw that? The the guy in the the um printing department who used to say So you say all of these so you say wait wait so you say all these ministers like Sandra Husbands, Sonia Brown, Ryan Strong, Corey Lynn, anybody who's a minute minister in the ministry just like a glorified personal assistant to the minister yeah, with no power but get ministers pay they have the, the constitution says that there could be the most there could be is a parliamentary secretary so so how how are they allowed to come to the public and say that these persons are ministers of the crown well that is because a public don't know the, the rules so if you don't know Anything will bypass you, you know. If they tell that they can fly, people will believe it. My job let the see them fly. Get the top to try the building and start the flight, but they won't please me and do that. Trust so me. just cut the cabinet. Just cut the cabinet. After all, seventeen ministers was too much. Last night I told you, Mayor Motley in opposition said Frandall Stewart had seventeen ministers. And that was five more than Barbados needed. I hope people, people remember that. I hope any, I hope you remember that. Yeah. When she came out of office, she got 26. Well, according to her mathematics, 26 is less than that. That's all I can tell you. You got ministers but about the place. When I when it was in the Senate, when I had a shot on Cappy one day when they tell you, but Cappy, you remember when you were Minister of Education? You weren't very effective, but you were handling education, youth, sport, and culture, and something else. No, there are four ministers handling that portfolio that you had. Four. And he, he, he pulled on your head. Because you got Minister of Sport, you got more of a culture, you got more of a oh, kind of foolishness. So you, that's what finding work for themselves. Hire one of the hiring people. We had a minister at one stage in the particular ministry who used to decide which message to drive which vehicle. That is in their clerk job. We get minister for the Somebody's asking how many, if anybody knows, how many consultants and advisors are there? Uh, they were paying out twenty-four million dollars worth in consulting fees. These people are but also no, okay. illegally. These people are paid from the public purse, and if you are paid from the public purse, you become a public officer, temporary or otherwise, and they should be selected by the Public Service Commission or what they call themselves these days in accordance with the Public Service Act. No, you bring in your yard folks, and the, but and they don't have to have any particular knowledge. We have written out the water authority, a consultant truck driver. He was a truck driver all his career, and now he retired to bring as a consultant. So I call, I call him a consultant truck driver. Yeah. So what was he supposed to do? I don't know what a consultant truck driver does, Lynette. See, I know enough things, but I know that. <laughs> He's a consultant truck driver, but that's all it could be. You know another skill? So 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 tell me the Prime Minister is the Minister of Finance and then the Minister
minister and then she's the minister of culture how many ministries no, does she run culture, uh, no, i don't remember i've got so many i don't i can't no she no 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 she brought, she brought the ministry of culture under her office um, that's when she first John King, and she brought the ministry under her office. And uh, Chantel Marona is not the minister in the prime minister's office, the responsibility right. for culture. Again, that is a corruption. So, so the minister. So, so hold a minute. So, 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 so the prime minister is a minister of finance. The prime minister is a minister of culture, and the, the prime minister is a minister of security. Yeah. National security uh, a public no. service. A now, public one, service. One, of the thing, one of the things I noticed is um, all of the all of the soft ministries or all of these soft funds. Um, NCF. If you if you look at the estimates, you would see all of the soft money is now in the prime minister's office. All, all you say all soft it, money, what do you mean? What do you mean? Could be clear. What money, do you mean by soft money, money? Money that would be in the National Cultural Foundation that you can um, come crop over time. Mm. You can you can create all kinds of things, all kinds of avenues to give people who you favor money. And there, there are ministries like that. I mean, they might have been set up with good intentions to support certain people, to support development activity. But the issue is always, how do you choose these people? So if you look at the estimates, you would see that a number of those things, including the NCF, I can't remember the other ones right now, but they were brought under the prime minister's office. Yeah. Let's, so that that so then that the prime yeah. minister's Speaking office of, is responsible then for um, determining where that money goes. I know I noticed yeah. it. Speaking of which, the next. Speaking of which, where in the area where you uh, contest traditionally. Himar is broken. Himar, Himar, Himar dropped out. Oh, but uh, yeah, he will come back in. But you know, I'm still here because I, you know, I I run I run my organization and and you know we we have you know we've been here and and we we're in the arts and we run we I understand how to run an organization. I'm trying to understand how in heaven's name this could ever be happening in this country. The prime minister is a minister of culture. Sit down, see you business people. Think about it. The prime minister is a minister of culture, the minister of national security, and the minister of finance. Does that make? Does that even even make any sense? Is this what we signed on to? This is this is this is a mockery. Is this real? This 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 don't this don't add up. It does this happen? Lena probably knows some of the history and cars. Well, does this happen? Anywhere else in the Caribbean that the Prime Minister is a minister of so many uh, ministries? It, it, it happens in the Caribbean, but not um, outside of the Caribbean, not in England where we take our uh, thing from. You know, the, the, but so people, many, but so, so many. The, 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 um, but no, these are just a few of the ministers, the Prime Minister's ministries, you know. I will have to find the, the official gazette. I had it here somewhere. I don't know if I can put my hand on it in any hurry. But I will send it by here. I, the, the, this, is, this is crazy, Lynette. This is crazy. I mean, the, 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 I, I, what I want to know, I mean, the way this, the way everything, what it seems to me is like there needs to be a way that the people can, how, how do you get a vote of no confidence? How, how does that happen, Lynette? You're a lawyer. Is that uh, possible? It's possible if you have people who are willing to vote against you. First of all, you have to have somebody who propose it, and somebody who will second it, and then they get debated. Now, if all of them are in the same party, and all of them right. are, are, most of them are unemployable, 
As well, you think you can bring your own government and then you're gonna work again? So you don't get a knock on this boss around this time. Matter of fact, Ben had a knock on this boss in Sandyford, only bought it, and some of the people who signed Sandyford's presence here when he died were the most <laughs> rabid persons against the same Sandyford. I, I don't know, I didn't know that Sandyford was so well loved until he died. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I miss. Not... Sorry, I was just saying, I miss. I miss um, a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kimar, you were asking a question and then you dropped out. So go ahead, please. We have seven minutes. We have seven yeah. minutes to go. But um, Kimar, I, ask I, a question and make a point. Right. I was saying quickly that I take comfortably that Kim Connie was one of the worst. Ministers that experience education our country experienced, and even if we chat about how uh, she was facilitated politically, we never heard about her before 2018, really, um, in politics. And the constitution of the country was changed to facilitate her coming back to Barbados. Temporary senators were appointed, and everything. And the government changed the entire law to, to bear back. Then John King, after doing one term, stepped down to then facilitate her into the House of Parliament. Then, like, in the snap of a finger, she was appointed to, 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 to serve over one of the largest ministries that we have uh, financially. And even if we, we protested the computer science test and we heard the responses coming up from her speaking to the people, um, we see schools are in a mess. We see they can't even get the 11 plus thing corrected. And none of the goals of the government as it relates to the management of education were met. And to me, COVID was the biggest loss for young people in Barbados or youth as it relates to education. And the government seems not to be doing anything at all to improve their law. They didn't even want to increase the fees at UV after criticizing the last government for doing it. So what really is happening to the education system in Barbados is crumbling right under the hands of what seems to be a political appointee and favor and friend of the prime minister because I do not see the competence as it relates to her in education. That's what I mean. You see the competence in any other minister? <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. Why should she be the only one that's competent? None of the rest are. You see? So, you know, so don't go down that road. And I can tell you something too. I am not defending her. What I'm going to tell you though is that this computer test that we had, the first one was done, she was in the Senate. When the first test was done, she was in the Senate. You do not go to an international agency to do a series of tests and they do one, and then the when the new minister come in, you go back and go do another one. Uh uh. These tests were approved by the cabinet even before she became minister of education. So you gotta ask yourself mm. who was the minister of education that, that approved the first one? Santia. You know, she was not the minister when the first test was done. The first, look, the only reason that test came out, you see, because I got I, I got a cousin for black people in this country, too, you know. The black people in this country did not say anything about that test when it was first done. It is only when the children, the little children from Queen's College went home and tell the parents what happened, that the white people start making noise and they be jumping. You forget that? It happened before. Mm -hmm. And the, and right. the other schools and the body say anything. And it's only when the white people took offense that it became a big issue and we jump up on the back. We are, black people are too cowardly. I don't want to expect everybody to be like me. But I don't want to be such a coward either. We're so, going to follow you, Caswell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to lead anything. For me, I don't want to lead anything. Right now, at my age, the only new career I want to embark upon is pensioner. And then these people get the way like they put me on 68. So, you know. But, but, it, but is it where education is concerned, though? 
anybody who cares about education and, and cares about the future of the country, you, you wonder after all this time, because before this government got into office on the first occasion, there were town hall meetings about education. There were presentations that were made. They were looking at other models in other parts of the world. So why is it that in 2023, nothing has happened up to now? Nothing has happened really. Watch, watch, um, you should watch, um, yes, minister. Um, so Humphrey calls that good, useful work. You know, where you, you go and do um, um, a study and you have do a paper and get that paper but then all that is good useful work it don't um come to it comes to not and you do it again you know it's good useful work it makes you look like you're doing something but they're doing nothing look we have never paid so much for government in, in this country until now and we are getting less than ever before i remember all permanent secretary told me the best minister he ever had was the guy, um, the sort of a taxi before underground the islands. What's his name now? Mancia Cox. He said Mancia Cox is a very intelligent man, but he didn't overreach, don't overstep his boundaries. But most ministers and Barbados nowadays take over the work of permanent secretaries, and we got a lot of dumb, dunsy permanent secretaries. Who ain't got a clue? But the only reason that they become permanent secretary is because they have the prime minister's backing, prime minister's ear, or whatever. And that is not how the public service is supposed to function. I was telling you about the recruitment of marshals and, and prison officers and that kind of thing. You know, once you got the, the, the politician's ear, you will get promoted, you will get appointed, you will get the job, and then the job don't get done because you don't have the wherewithal between your ears. To get it worked so out. you support put so you support putting these permanent secretaries on contracts that is nonsense that is absolute rubbish but the government is proposing it i can tell you why our system uh, 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 we have tell us in one minute as well okay. <laughs> and our we continue tomorrow we continue our tomorrow our system is designed for a uh, temporary politicians and permanent civil servants when the politicians go out the permanent civil servants remain and those permanent civil servants are supposed to give good advice to whoever forms the government now if you have a fellow who is temporary because he's on contract when the prime minister or any minister wants some advice and he don't get the advice that want he can say well sorry but prime minister this is not what you should be doing he ain't get a contract and get renewed and that's what this is that's why it is done to keep those fellows in subjection but Caswell, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we, we, we are so bad at giving ourselves credit for things that we do well, that I don't think that people understand how all of that is undermining the stability of this country. All, all of those things, they, people just see them as little things, but all of them added together, we will end up we will wake up one morning and wonder how Barbados got this way. It's called dictatorship. You're destroying mm. the it destroying the country, you're destroying the structures of the country which ha, which have held it in good stead all these years. Yes, we need re reforms for sure. We need to do things better. But the structure that works that support us, if we destroy that, we're not going to have anything. And that, you know, I mentioned that before in another session about the fact that the civil service provides that continuity in everything that some other countries are not so fortunate to have. We were lucky always to have that. If your yeah. car breaks down, what? car breaks down, you do not get a plumber. Right now, this broken down car has bare plumbers. <laughs> guys thank you so, as Yvonne, Yvonne says this has been a very educational and insightful um session um listen and somebody's asking for 30 more minutes come and join tomorrow night tomorrow night is very important tell somebody about it and let me tell you I, I, what i'm telling you to do i am doing i learned so much tonight i got 
I find it a book here, Yvonne, and I write in the book. I don't like to put the notes in the phone, right? That so tomorrow big. night we're gonna that book what? That book getting big. <laughs> yes, it getting big. I'm fat because I write in. <laughs> so guys, um, Lynette, that was awesome. That your presentation, Keymark. Thank you. Um, where's Keymark? Where's Keymark? Did I add it, add it to the stream? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Keymark. Thank you for your presentation. Um, um, this evening, Mr. Franklin, the General. Oh my Lord of mercy! I learned and I laughed. <laughs> Two L's. <laughs> thank you so very much, um, guys, and. Um, here we have the um, the bill. I mean, here we have the, the march that is going to be on um, on Saturday. And listen, guys, all, all you know, we laugh, but it's a serious matter. We're very focused on it. There are 12 um, demands that we are making because we, we have a right to. We put them there. Um, we put the, we put everybody there. We we put them in power, and there are twelve of them that we are making, and we're not going to stop Barbados until it's done. This is going if it's going to take us thirteen months, thirteen months like the Montgomery protest. We should not stop until it's done. So make sure we have unfinished business. We are out there on Saturday at ten o'clock. All right. So thank you to everybody who joined. Um, this was fun learning and it was fun as well. See you all um, tomorrow evening and invite somebody. All right. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.